The Rye Group is one of those demolition contractors that flies below the radar. The company does some impressive work for some prestigious clients, but it largely avoids the spotlight until now. The company has a new mission statement that's geared around the subject of sustainability. So we caught up with the Rye Group to find out more. You've now got a new tagline, the sustainable standard. That sounds great, but what does that actually mean in practice? The sustainable standard is our framework that's been developed to address key areas of impact in the business. So it's basically the foundations of this and includes the people we work with, uh, the safety and health of these people, uh, the quality of our works, uh, the environment and communities we work within. So. Yeah, um, I'd agree. It does sound like a, a great tagline, um, but the sustainable standards, it underpins everything we do at Rye. Um, our aim is to you know, demonstrate that demolition and the supporting services can be done in a way that has a positive impact on society. Um, you know, for example, this can be seen in our modern fleet of company vehicles, hybrid and electric, and you know, our plan for upgrading to stage five final uh, to meet the current emission standards. And I suppose as a business, we're, we're just striving really for continual improvement uh, year on year. Sustainability, I, I believe like, you know, the way that we process our waste, recycle materials, demolition's sort of always been a very sustainable business. Um, like, you know, we, we, we reclaim the, the waste timber, uh, concrete, uh, bricks, Metals, you know, we segregate them at source, uh, recycle where we can, uh, reuse on site where we can, so minimise waste to our, you know, to the maximum. Um, we don't, because it's so effective, almost nothing from demolition now goes to landfill, apart from the obvious waste that can't be dealt with, asbestos, etc. We try to recycle absolutely everything. Um, when... Obviously, the sustainable standard came about. We realised our environmental commitments need to go beyond waste and uh, recycling. We're auditing our standards uh, environmentally. Um, it, the environmental health and safety and quality linking together so nicely that, you know, it, it, like you said, Mark, it, it's just, I think it's the way the businesses are going now. It's um, mission statements, manifestos, continual improvement it's just a massive part of what business does nowadays demolition contractors already have a great reputation for their ability to extract value and reclaim materials so what more can be done so it's within the business where we're becoming sustainable you know so um you know with staff with the training with the you know the social values within the business um mission statements all of these these bits we we do we do we do it without really knowing that we're doing them we sort of it's the same thing it was always being done but we didn't really shout it out we didn't say look this is what we're doing and yeah. we didn't see the you know how important it was to to you know get it out to people and everyone to understand that because most people are sustainable they just yeah. don't think about it and i think that's where we're going to try you know we're trying to you know uh, encourage the business and other businesses to follow and, and see there's more to just waste and recycling there's so much more we can do and as i say it's fairly all fairly new even though we've been doing it it's still fairly new to me mark but a bit older than the two but i'm getting there you know i brought in the you know ben's come across ben was um ex-military safety manager for barrett's for many years and we've built a relationship over over the years um, and sort of uh, Ben seen, I believe, you know, where Rye could, could go to with, you know, shouting about what we do. And, and you know, I've, it's been great. You know, Ben's been with us over what, eight months now. Um, you know, he's taking a direct <laughs> ship in the business. And, you know, we are, we are taking it up to what would be the sustainable next le level. Would that sustainability extend to your equipment fleet? For example, if it was viable to do so, would you consider electric or hybrid machines? Machines, obvious uh, sort of um, 
uh, um, development at the minute have not really considered that demolition is an is a is a, a practice where the machines don't do a lot of slewing. And a lot of the electric and hybrids have um, used the slew motion to recharge. Um, there are other things about, but believe they haven't developed far enough yet for the demolition. We we would obviously consider it. It would never be uh, uh, over the price. It would it would be if it is uh, more um, uh, sustainable, and uh, we would we would you know consider it. We're waiting for more advancements, obviously within this technology. We are currently though speaking to our fuel suppliers um, regarding um, HVO as an alternative to the diesel. So. I don't know if you know much about HVO, but it's uh, probably one of the cleanest fuels on the market. It's a hydro treated vegetable oil. Um, no, no modifications to the machines required. Um, it's a synthetic biofuel and it, it really reduces you know, CO2 and monoxide emissions. It really is, is it's good. So we are, we are speaking to them now, um, getting that it's an alternative to to the diesel and you know this is our sort of alternative to electric at the moment but definitely alternative to, to diesel so so something <clears> about that's more um user friendly for demolition i suppose you know how does that pursuit of sustainability impact upon your workforce well i mean remembering that we don't see sustainability as just um environmental impact it also impacts on the workforce and as we're you know, looking to ensure that they have career paths and have opportunities to develop and and just feel fulfilled in what they do. So, you know, we also hope that this focus we have makes them proud to work for Ryan. And I suppose the, the greater demolition industry, um, our workforce will be involved in more training, uh, community initiatives, finding ways to innovate and improve and, you know, just the services that we offer. So, Improvements driven by everyone, and we hope that our colleagues uh, at Rye are keen to be part of that journey. As I said in my intro, Rye Group kind of flows below the radar. You're not the biggest company, and yet you seem to work for some very prestigious clients, and you do some very impressive work. To what do you attribute that success? Well, Mark, I think, as you know, it's a, uh, Rye is a family business. Uh, three sons working within the business as we speak, <laughs> uh, which is challenging some days. <laughs> But uh, we built on good, strong relationships, good communication, and obviously always delivering high quality work. But, you know, I believe we're dedicated, uh, hardworking, and this, I believe, gives the clients confidence in our ability to just deliver any project, no matter how complex or high profile, profile it is. I suppose, I sort of knew you might ask this question, so, so it's not about being the biggest, Mark. It's about being the best. I know that probably sounds a bit cliche, but it is what we believe in. And, you know, the repeat custom of some of the largest main contractors and house builders in the UK demonstrates this. Some of the projects we've been involved with, I was didn't know whether I should bring it up, Mark, but one of the, um, I think one of the largest, most challenging uh, uh, sites we did was West Ham Football Ground, which it doesn't seem... That long ago that we were uh, walking around uh, the, the stadium before it was demolished. I know it's uh, quite close to your heart there, Mark. So I don't know if I want to bring I didn't want to bring this up today, but I've done it. I've done it anyway. So yeah, so that was it was an, a really, really sort of challenging job for us as a business, but it, it really showed what we could do. Um, we just got involved in a site in Aldershot Town Centre, which is a, a regeneration scheme, and it's fantastic to see such. I wouldn't say run down, but sort of a, a, a town which was a, a really vibrant place back in the day of the, I suppose, the military when it was more a military town. Um, it's nice to see that it's coming again back to life again, you know, with new buildings and new new places and apartments and shops. And just to be part of that, Mark, it's, it's really, um, not you know, it's interesting, but it's, it's also quite we quite proud to be part of it, Mark, if I'm honest. The Rye Group is known primarily as a demolition contractor, but there's more to you than just demolition. What other services do you offer? We started um, into um, the enabling works, which is the piling mats and uh, um, ground stabilisation works. Um, 
major earthworks, you know, uh, reduced level digs and, uh, you know, um, returns off site, uh, remediation. Um, I think the biggest bit we've sort of got involved with is the stabilisation, which is an, an alternative to um, where typically it was, um, you know, demolish the buildings, crush all the concrete, um, and then dig away a, a large proportion of the material, putting crushed concrete into it. It meant that there was still, you know, even though it's inert waste, it was still going to, with, you know, to um, tips, taking up, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the sites where it doesn't really need to go off site. So by stabilising the materials in situ, it delivers a part of that, reduces the um, um, carbon footprint by the vehicle movements, then the obviously the, it, the crushed concrete and material is crushed with a, a standard that can be then reused on other sites and on site material is, is staying in situ. And that's really where I, I think the last say 18 months I've seen the business grow into stabilization a lot more than anything else. So I'd say that you know, as much as we do all, all of them other other um, works. The stabilisation has been a, a massive part for us to uh, take on, and you know, it's 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 it's, it's interesting. And it's it's different. It's science, and it's it's um, we've taken on um, two earthwork managers that run this side of things. And one's geotechnical, um, and it, it it really is um, establishing a really good team around us with the experience and and the knowledge. And then we can deliver this to our clients um, and, and you know so not, we're not just delivering a, a, a demolitions project and then um, you know away we go we're just building the whole um, sort of the whole package then we can hand it over to them and the clients just one step closer to redeveloping that site and it's worked really well over the last you know last two years, I suppose, three years when we started to diversify. Well, we, we feel that by having a broad range of services, we can simplify matters for our clients. So, you know, Simon touched on it. Uh, they only need to deal with a single organisation, uh, Rye, um, and they hold us accountable. Uh, it makes it more efficient. Um, you know, we control the whole programme of work. And then you can reduce cost, uh, reduce timelines, and, and all of that it aids sustainability. Now, obviously, Simon, you're currently the vice chairman of the National Demolition Training Group. But how do you utilise training within your own company? When I first came to London, I was only 16 at the time, had no training, um, had, you know, a little experience on um, the machine operating. And I was just fortunate to be given uh, various opportunities to help develop myself. I enjoyed growing with the business, you know, in different um, areas of the business that I was involved with. I suppose just because of my own personal experience, I see the value in training and just understand how important it is that every individual has opportunities, you know, and, and I have a strong belief in that. Um, so at the moment, we, 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 before I was uh, NDTG, obviously I've done my tenure with uh, the NFDC, but we've a number of people have always come to our business, started in junior positions, having left school, and it progressed really well within the group of uh, companies. Um, currently now we've got two uh, machine drivers and one uh, more going on to the top man, uh, you know, not, I wouldn't say the charge hand level uh, area of the business. So, um, you know, those have got great careers ahead of them within our business and, and you know, We'd just like to, it's great to see them grow with the business and their experience and, and the, the experience being passed down from people, a lot of people have been with me since the business started and previous to that when I was working for, for another company doing, you know, a, a operation director. Um, so we're looking forward to welcoming uh, some new apprentices this year. Um, we want to get some, you know, encourage, encourage their, their career development, um, and training. We'd like to do this for all our staff, Mark, to give them every opportunity to develop the career within the group. Myself, coming from a completely 
a different industry in the military and uh, coming over to I, one of the first things you're asked is what training have you got but what training would you like to do so it's it's really important for us and, and you know long may that continue skill shortages are a major challenge for construction and demolition what can be done to rectify that as, as well as you know dedicated training i think we need to commit to having career development plans and, and paths for all of our staff so uh, and constantly reviewing that, engaging with the workforce, really. I think it's important to cast on net out far uh, to continue to encourage people from different, you know, diverse fields, such as forces, ex-offenders, using local labour and, and actually other industries. Um, we, you know, funnily enough, we were saying the other day, demolition seems to lack appeal um, for the modern day work. And we're not, we're not sure why, you know, we, we need to show people that, uh, you know, we can work the right way and hence the sustainable standard approach so ultimately new people want to uh, work with us. Now we've already seen the first female NFDC president but are we doing enough to address the gender imbalance within the sector? Well I suppose it ties back to what we said earlier there could be many reasons why there's such a a gender imbalance Um, but I I think the challenge is there for us all to, to grasp as industry leaders um, you know, to ensure careers in, in demolition are available to everyone and, you know, we improve that diversity. Um, we, we've always advocated opportunities to all um, and it's important to continually evolve and address uh, gender imbalance in our industry, you know, because it, it's a big part of, part of that, I think. Now, Simon, you hold a position of considerable influence within the NDTG, but if I made you king of demolition for a day, what is the one thing you would change? Well, actually, I thought I was king of the demolition, so it disappeared to me a bit there, Mark. Um, but uh, only joking, by the way. Uh, in all honesty, I just thought demolition's been more appealing to the younger generation. It's an incredible industry, and it offers such excellent opportunities like I've had. Perhaps more work could be done with the school leavers and educate them more about our industry and its benefits. You, know, you hear about um, um, joiners, bricklayers, electricians, all of these things have get led to you join school. But I don't believe anybody offers coming to demolition, which is such a, a vast amount of work that we do. And it's so interesting. I absolutely still have a passion to get up every day and go to work and enjoy going around my sites. It's 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 really, really a great business to come into. So I suppose if I, if I could, I'd really, really expand on that and bring in the youth, the, the, the ones, you know, obviously willing to work hard and, and just show, you know, what can be done. I, I've come from 16 and 55 now, so nearly... 40 years in London, working through my way up. And as I say, I'm not a, a massive company, as you said earlier, but I've got a really good business and a good reputation, did good work. And, and all of this has been done by just hard work and having opportunities. So if, if I could change, I'd like to give as many opportunities, which is what I do, but I'd like the whole industry to give opportunities and to shout out loud about it. So I suppose that's all we'll be able to do, Mark. Very, very briefly, I suppose, the um, the business created um, two two schemes, one for um, a trainee site manager, one for a trainee health and safety manager. And we wanted to recruit Exxon forces. So we created a, a kind of um, online um, uh, job spec for it and I put it out really on the, the Rye website through LinkedIn and all of the social media channels and um, the interest we got was incredible um, completely uh, over and above uh, our expectations so for the past uh, two or three months I've been talking to I don't know 50, 50 or so potential applicants who want just the opportunity to come and work for us which it's brilliant. Um, I mean, it's taken loads of my time and I think I'm finally sort of down to uh, the, the, the final couple of potential candidates. But yeah, like I say, it's just really, um, it's just surprised us the interest we had. Um, and, and we're looking at armed forces, as, a, you know, as I said earlier, these people 
have very good transferable skills. They've worked in potentially high-risk environments and, and they're going into another potentially high-risk environment. So their ability to manage high-risk works is, is pretty much ingrained in them and they're, they're very well-trained people. So um, we're pursuing that and we hope by uh, June to have at least one of the, the places filled and, and start that programme.